In this video, I'm going to show you how I took my old drill press and upgraded it five different ways. I'm going to start by building a new stand with tons of storage and organization, a new table with a neat hidden feature that I think you guys are really going to like, and I'm also going to add dust collection. Oh yeah, and there's one other upgrade that I'll save as a surprise for later. Now, I've got a lot to build, so let's get going. All right, for upgrade number one, I'm going to make a proper stand for my drill press. So to do that, I'm going to get out my centipede work holder to help me break down some plywood. This is my favorite way to break down plywood because I can cut it at a comfortable height and I have access to all sides, making it easy to cut with my track saw. I'm going to make this stand all out of 3 quarter inch plywood, except for a little bit of quarter inch that I'll use for the drawer bottoms. All I'm doing here is cutting this plywood into manageable chunks for the parts I need. I prefer to cut my parts to final dimensions over at the table saw, so that's where I'm going to head next. The first cut I make is to get rid of the rough factory edge. I want nice crisp edges on all my parts. Then I can cut my two side panels as well as the back and bottom panels. I'm also going to cut all my drawer fronts out of one piece of plywood to achieve a continuous grain pattern across the front of the stand. I then go ahead and cut all my drawer parts. I'm making four drawers in total. And after making the remaining cuts to get the stretchers and the drawer accessory parts, I have everything I need to start joinery. First, I'm going to cut a rabbit along the back edge of each side piece, and that's going to be used to fit the back panel. To do this, I'm going to use my setup blocks to set the height of the blade as well as the distance from the fence. These little guys are so handy, you just grab the size you need and go. After making the first cut in both sides, I tap the fence slightly towards the blade and repeat the cuts. And I'm going to keep repeating this process until the blade just kisses the fence. There you have it, two rabbits, nice and clean. The only other cuts that I have to make at the table saw are to cut grooves on the bottom side of the drawer parts and that's going to be used to hold the drawer bottoms. And once I dial in the perfect fit for this quarter inch plywood, I can run through all the other parts in no time. To assemble the drawers, I'm going to be using pocket screws, so after cutting my pockets with my handy pocket hole station, I can move on to getting these guys assembled. Assembling these is really easy. I line up all my parts in the right orientation with the front and back sitting in between the two sides. Notice here how the grooves are all facing up and the back of the drawer sits below the grooves. That's the key to making this so easy. After I clamp up the sides, making sure that everything is flush, I go ahead and pop my screws in. I then remove the clamps and check for square. Finally, I can slide the bottom panel into the grooves from the back side, and this is why I cut that back panel short. This is way easier than assembling the sides around the bottom all at once. All I have to do is pop a few brad nails in to keep the bottom panel from sliding out, and I'm done. Now to assemble the stand, I begin by attaching the bottom panel to the side panels using pocket screws. I have screws going in all different directions, including the front, which if you're still awake and paying attention, is a mistake. I actually don't need pocket holes along that edge. It's a good thing that this is the bottom of the stand. Next, I can do a dry fit of the back panel just to make sure everything lines up well before adding glue to the rabbits and clamping the back in place. Pocket screws then get added for extra strength since this stand is going to be holding a pretty heavy drill press on top of it. The last thing I need to add to the carcass are the stretchers, so I go ahead and flip the stand onto its top and then slide the stretchers into place before clamping them there. Then I can rotate the carcass and attach them with pocket screws. And with that, the carcass is complete. Now I just need to wait for the glue to dry. Once the glue is dry, I can add these small blocks to the bottom to hold the casters. I just screw them into place before screwing the casters to the blocks. The drawer slides get installed on the drawers and then installed in the stand by using spacers to make sure that both sides are lined up perfectly at the top. Then I cut that spacer down until it lines up with the location of my next set of slides. I continue this process until I have all four sets of slides installed and I can slide my drawers into their new home. To make a top for this stand, I just fasten two pieces of plywood together with screws and then trim the edges flush. I cut some 3 quarter inch hard maple which is going to serve for the edge banding which will also match the other cabinets in my shop. After gluing on the edge banding and waiting for it to dry, I can go ahead and attach the top to the stand with screws through the stretchers. For the drawer fronts, I added iron on edge banding to give it a finished look. 
This is a totally optional step for shop furniture in my opinion, but if I'm gonna be looking at this every day, I want it to look clean and also match the rest of the shop, so I'm gonna add edge banding. All right, to drill the holes for the drawer pulls, I have this super handy jig from True Position that makes drilling repeated consistent holes fast and easy. To install the drawer fronts, my favorite trick is to use two-sided tape to attach a scrap of plywood to the bottom to act as a positive reference for aligning the first drawer front. I can just drop my drawer front right on that little ledge I created and line it up for this boss level trick I'm about to show you. To install the drawer fronts, I'm going to drive two screws through those holes that I made for the drawer pull. This will attach the drawer front to the drawer temporarily while I screw it in place from the inside of the cabinet. Then I can just pop those front screws out and drill all the way through to the drawer. Now I can just install my drawer hardware and boom, first drawer done. And for my final trick, the trifecta of drawer front installation hacks, I use an eighth inch strip of maple as a spacer to create a nice even gap between my drawer fronts. Then I just work my way up the stand employing all my tricks until I get them all installed and bam, this stand is complete. Well, almost complete. I still need to add some efficient storage solutions to these drawers. And that's gonna be upgrade number two. I have two different ideas in mind here and to get started, I'm gonna install a couple of spacers in the top two drawers. Next, I take a small scrap of quarter inch ply and glue some sides onto it using CA glue and activator. The idea here is to make a quick and easy sliding tool tray to hold many of my loose drill bits. I don't think this is entirely needed, but I did reinforce the tray with screws from the bottom. I guess better to over-engineer it and not need it than to skip this step and risk all my bits falling out when the tray falls apart. These trays are going to keep all my loose bits and my most used items easily at hand while still allowing plenty of storage inside the drawer for other items. So the more that I've worked on shop organization, the more I've started to focus on the elimination of steps in certain operations. And I think I've got a really good example to illustrate this. For instance, take this case of Forstner bits. If I wanted to use these, I've got to take it out of this drawer, over to the bench, open it up, search for the bit I want, because of course, none of them are ever in the right space that they're supposed to be in, and take it back to the drill press to use. And hopefully I'm only doing that once. If I need to use more than one Forster bit, I've got to repeat that process. But I think I have a solution that allows me to open the drawer, clearly see the Forster bit that I want, grab it and go, and then put it right back where it belongs. To begin, I cut a small scrap of three quarter inch plywood to fit the inside of one of the drawers. Next, I make a layout of all my Forster bits that I printed out on a piece of paper. I attach that layout to the plywood and now I can use each bit to drill its own pocket. That way every pocket is perfectly fit with the bit that goes in it. Once all the holes are drilled, I can remove the remainder of the template and move on to adding the final touch, which is adding the size of the drill bit next to each pocket for easy identification when looking down on it from above. Then I can go ahead and load it up with all my bits and set it in its new home. That's it for the stand, now let's move on to making a new drill press table. To create the drill press table, I start by cutting two pieces of 3 quarter inch ply and laminating them together with glue. I get clamps on wherever I can reach and in the middle I use screws countersunk from the bottom to apply clamping pressure there and these are going to just be removed later once the glue is dry. And once that glue is dry, I head over to the joiner to make one edge flat so I can use it as a reference. Then back to the table saw where I put that edge against the fence and cut the opposite side parallel to it. I then use my crosscut sled to trim and square up the other two sides. Now is a good time to go ahead and label the front and back edge of this table as reference for what's coming next. I then begin laying out the various features like T-track slots and clearance for the drill press post. I want to know where these are located because I'm going to add room for magnets all along the back edge to catch any stray bits that might wander off the edge of the table. After marking the locations with a center punch, I use a Forstner bit to drill a series of 1 8 inch deep pockets. And the magnets I'm using are going to be held in place with CA glue. Now that all the magnets are in place, I'm going to go ahead and add a layer of black formica to the top. And to do this, I'm using contact cement. If you've never used Formica before, it's a really tough surface and it's gonna take a lot of wear and tear over time, not to mention adding a really sweet look to this table. And if you're wondering, you can buy four by eight sheets of Formica at your local flooring store or anywhere that sells countertop supplies. 
Sometimes you can even get lucky and find sheets of this stuff at your big box home store. After pressing the Formica onto the plywood, the bond is more or less permanent. I can then use my trim router to flush up the Formica to the table. How awesome does that look? Okay, next I need to cut some dados in the top and bottom to accept some T-Track. Since my T-Track is going to be the same distance from both edges of the table, I can make a cut, then flip my workpiece around and make the second cut. Then I just nudge the fence away from the blade and make my next cut. Repeating this process allows me to sneak up on the cut so that the T-Track fits perfectly with no slop. I then repeated this whole process over on the bottom side of the table and you'll see why I'm doing that soon. Next I'm going to cut a notch out of the back of the table to accommodate the pillar of the drill press. This will allow for a little extra depth if I need to reposition the table to drill a hole in a hard to reach place. I started this process by using my jigsaw but I quickly noticed that the upper cut of the blade was chipping out the formica in a pretty bad way. To finish this process I went over to the bandsaw which has a downward cutting motion. This resulted in a much better experience and I had a lot more control over the finer cuts as well. And I finished this up by sanding the curve smooth back to the reference lines. Next, I trimmed off a small bit of the front corners with my track saw. I like this feature because it removes any sharp corners that you might bump into and this area of the table really isn't necessary for supporting your workpiece. After that, I need to cut my T-track to length so I mark my cut lines and trim it all at the miter saw. If you didn't know, it's perfectly fine to cut aluminum with woodworking tools. With a self-centering bit, I drill the pilot holes and screw the track into place. All right, now for the fun part. I need to create a recess here to install a sacrificial plate. To do that, I cut a circle from a scrap of plywood and attached it with two-sided tape. I'm gonna start by hogging out the majority of the material with a Forstner bit. I needed to move over to a hand drill for the last bit because my drill press couldn't reach it. To finish it off, I'm going to use a flush trim bit in the router, which is going to leave a flat bottom and a smooth wall. I then go back to the drill press to make a through hole. This is going to allow me to pop the sacrificial plate out from underneath when it gets all chewed up. For the sacrificial plates, I put a small chamfer on both sides, and this is just going to allow them to easily fall into that recess that I made on the table. It also makes it easier to spin by reducing the friction, and spinning this is going to allow me to use all parts of the sacrificial plate before I throw it away. One final touch is to chamfer all the edges and reinstall the T-Track. To install the new table, I just add T-bolts to those tracks that I added on the underside of the table and then align those to the slots on the stock table of the drill press. A couple fender washers and some wing nuts are going to keep everything firmly in place. So for the fence on this table, I went with an aluminum extrusion from a company called Masumi. Now they've got lots of different aluminum profiles that you can purchase, but this one seemed to be perfect for my application and it's considerably cheaper than if you were to go buy an aluminum fence from a woodworking supplier. This 600 millimeter piece cost me about $12. It's got tracks in it so that you can attach stop blocks to it, and I can also use it in the upright position like this for more support, or lay it on its side and use it as a really low profile fence so that the handles of the drill press don't bump into it. To make the fence work, all I need to do is drill some holes for the T-bolts. I'm adding these holes on the wide face of the fence as well so that I can use this fence in both directions. Then I can add the fence and this thing is ready to rock. And you can see here how those magnets that I put in the back do a great job of holding stray bits and keep them from rolling off the table. I can also use the bottom tracks to store my stop blocks and hold downs. So one of the things that can happen on a really big project is that you end up using the same few drill bits over and over and over again for different operations. And you don't want to put those drill bits away and then have to get them back out on the same project. That's just a waste of time. So it'd be really nice to have a caddy right here where I could keep all the bits that I'm using on a project right here at eye level so I can swap them out, put them in the tool, use them, and then put them back. And then when my project's over, I can take everything and put it back where it belongs. Should be a big time saver. To start making the tool caddy, I draw some reference lines on a scrap of three quarter inch plywood. I then use the table saw to cut the main body free from the collar. The band saw makes quick work of removing the waste here and a belt sander smooths everything out. Next I add through holes to the collar and a set of matching holes to the caddy. I then drill two more holes which are going to be used to house these barrel nuts. 
Now I can thread a furniture bolt into the barrel nut to test the alignment. And a quick test confirms that this whole thing is gonna work the way that I wanted it to. For the caddy itself, I'm gonna just make a series of quarter inch, three eighths inch, and half inch holes, which give me a wide variety of options for storing any of my bits on the caddy. And on the far side of the caddy, I'm gonna bore some holes from the underside, which are gonna be used to house some more magnets. Now I can add a quick chamfer to all sides and install the caddy in its new home. Now I've got room to hold lots of drill bits at once, and I even drilled a through hole to hold my chuck key. And the magnets that I added are actually strong enough to hold this large plug cutter bit up on its end. Another thing I wanted to address is dust collection. Now that's a sore subject when it comes to drill presses because it's very hard to get good dust collection here. So I think I found a solution that was really easy to build and it's also pretty effective and I can get it out of the way easily when I don't want it. To make the dust collection attachment, I start with a small scrap of ply. I find the center and then drill a through hole which is gonna be used to hold a small length of dowel that I'm just gonna glue in place. Then I'm gonna add a Velcro tie down by attaching it using a pan head screw. And then I bore a corresponding hole in the drill press table. The dust collection attachment is gonna fit in that hole and the tie down wraps around my dust collection hose to hold it in place. If I need to adjust the position of the hose, I just loosen the strap and move the hose. All right, let's test this out by drilling some holes. Using the Forstner bit, it gets a pretty good amount of the chips. And when I use a twist bit, it pretty much gets all of it. Well, it looks like this solution really sucks. Well, that's a wrap. Five upgrades that I was able to make to my old drill press. Now, I really appreciate having this new stand with all of the storage and organization that it has in it. But I really, really love this new table. I think this is the biggest feature for me in terms of making the drill press as useful as possible. But I'd really like to know what you guys think. Make sure to leave a comment below about which feature was your favorite and which one you'd want to add to your own drill press. And if you found this video helpful and inspiring, please like and subscribe to the channel and also watch these other videos that I have here on other shop projects that I think you guys would really enjoy. And until next time, have fun in the shop.